So before we leave this section, we're going to do one more, one more topic. Um, right? If we're doing calculus, well, we've done tangents, we've done arc length. We didn't talk about area. Right? Think more like area under a curve, area between curves. Right? Now, I know the book does surface area, and you're probably wondering, like, where is, the you know, where is that surface area example? Um, one of the examples that the textbook does is the surface area of the object that you get if you, if you revolve this thing around, I think, around the x-axis, right? You get this funny kind of donut-looking thing. Well, you can do it, but you just end up with another integral that you don't know how to evaluate, which maybe is kind of a letdown, right? This is something we don't know how to evaluate. There's nothing we can do with it. Right? Numerical methods, that's the best you can do. Simpson's rule, something like that. Okay? Um, and actually, it's not much of a leap from arc length to surface area. Remember that for surface area, right? surface area, you do 2 pi times the radius times ds, right? where this is your ds. So, and typically, the, the radius is either x or y. So you're putting either x of t or y of t in front. You're setting up the integral with a 2 pi, you get the surface area. Um, no, but I want to talk about just good old, honest to goodness area, right? Well, what do we do with area under the curve, right? Think about if you just have, you know, this basic thing. We have some curve, y is equal to f of x, right, from a to b, and we want the area under the curve. Well, we know what this looks like, right? Area is the integral from a to b, fx dx, right? Now, we might alternatively write that as just simply y times dx, okay? Now, turns out you can basically use the exact same formula for parametric curves. The only problem is you got to be careful about which way you're going around. Um, because you might get a minus sign if you're not careful, right? Um, and the typical orientation that we take, right, is usually, I mean, like we have it here maybe by coincidence, but think about circles, things like that. We, we like to do counterclockwise, right? Um, this one is actually clockwise, okay? But we often, for a circle, we do a counterclockwise rotation. And so you start playing around and you start thinking about, like, what if I did, you know, what if I did have a curve like that? What if I had a parametric curve? And it was a closed curve, right? So now what's interesting is you have a curve with a self-intersection. So maybe you, you start at some point, right? You start at some point. Here's t is equal to some initial value t naught. And you go around, and you come back, and you end, and you get back to that same point at some other time, t equals t1, right? So you go around in this direction, okay? Well, you can, you can start thinking about things like, well, look, there's, there's a horizontal tangent up here, vertical here, horizontal here. And other curves might be more complicated, right? And you want to make sure that as you're going around, you're actually computing total area. I mean, you can do the usual thing like we do with area between curves. Think of this, you know, we could go between, say, the two vertical tangents, do the area under that one. Right, minus the area under the other. You can do these kinds of things, it works out. Um, but it turns out you can basically do this. You just have to keep track of direction of travel. Um, so you think about, okay, starting from here. So I have T naught to um, this, well, you know what, let's not call that T1 just yet. Um, T naught, let's call this T1, T2, T3, make that T4. So between T naught and T1, Notice that um, x prime is less than 0, y prime of t is bigger than 0, okay? Um, so that means that y dx, so y dx, right? So the idea here is now um, if we parameterize, if, if x and y are functions of t, so a and b now come from some values, t naught to, well, let's call it t4, okay? Um, y of t dx will be x prime of t times dt, right? But notice that for this portion of the curve, um, x prime, y prime is your, you know, or actually I guess we should say 
um, x prime is negative, and just plain old y of t is positive, right? Um, x prime is negative. Um, x prime is still negative here. Um, so you can kind of, you can start playing around with these things and you think about the product. And, and also, well, dt, we'll have dt is going to be increasing. Um, but x prime is decreasing from here to here, right? So you basically get, if you do this portion, right, area under that curve, right, between the two vertical tangents, this bit of area, x is decreasing for all of that. So x prime is negative. So if I want positive area, I should actually do minus, right? Y is bigger than zero for all of that, right? I should actually do minus, right? Um, and then you think about the other bit. You're gonna, you're gonna subtract off that part, right? And x prime is now actually increasing for that, right? So x switches sign. But that's the part that you wanna subtract off. So that's good, you actually keep the same sign out front. And the fact that x prime changes sign when you come back the other way, it turns out that takes care of it. Uh, it gets a little bit dicey to go through all the possible scenarios and, and work it all out, but um, you, can, you can actually check that for closed curves, if you do minus y dx, you should always get the answer. Um, for a counterclockwise orientation, for clockwise orientation, you put a plus sign. That said, let's think about finding the, uh, the area of this teardrop, right? For the teardrop, we have y of t is t squared minus 1 x prime of t, we have as 3t squared minus 1. And so the area for this one should be, if we've got this right, integral from minus 1 to 1 of y of t, t squared minus 1, times x prime of t, 3t squared minus 1, times dt. And that's, that's an integral I can actually evaluate. You go from minus 1 to 1, I've got 3 t to the 4 uh, minus 4 t squared plus 1 dt. Um, and again, it is even, so I could do, I could double it, use symmetry, go from 0 to 1 and double it, right? That's because we have basically, right? From, from 0 to 1 gives me half the area, the other half is over here. And so I get uh, 6 over 5 t to the 5 minus 8 over 3 t cubed plus 2 t from 0 to 1. So I get 6 over 5 minus 8 over 3 plus 1. Um, so that is, let's see, 18 minus 24 plus 15 over 15, so that is 9 over 15, or 3 over 5, is that right? Let me just make sure I got that. I think we're, yeah, 18. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Eight, this should be 40. 8, eight times 5, right? Oh, and that actually makes me concerned, because that's negative. So, well, if it's negative, that's a sign I went the wrong way around. Um, I think the, the issue here is probably that this is entirely below the y-axis. Signs always come out and, and cause trouble. And I think, actually, yeah, with a bit of playing around, you can work out what the area formula should be like. It's typically plus or minus y times dx, and you can go all the way around the curve and it works out for you. Um, just, you know, if, if you get the wrong sign at the end, just say, hey, I must have needed a minus sign out front, put that minus sign all the way through, and um, that's wrong, right? Change that minus to a plus at the end. No one will know the difference, 